Cool. Welcome back to the Off My Meds pod. It has been quite the time for Jen and figuring out this goddamn audio mixer. We're trying something different today. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but that's not gonna stop me in 2024 from not making this f-ing content. So I'm making it. We are gonna answer some of your most frequently asked questions. I might d- do this in a two-parter, we'll see. I got a lot of questions that I wasn't actually anticipating on getting, and so I can't wait to, some of them are really juicy, and I can't wait to actually answer some of them for you. If you have questions, wanna confess anything, wanna ask for life advice, send that to the Off My Meds email that I will have included here. And I think we're just gonna jump into it. All right, here we go. Favorite WWE superstar? I think I said this one before. I actually responded to this one when I asked for questions in my stories. Mick Foley, first and foremost. If you saw that story already, I'll give you another one. Who's another favorite WWE superstar? Lita is a diehard favorite of mine. She was always the like, I don't know, in the era of beach blonde hotties, she was always the kind of like alternative one that I really always loved watching. She had the most awesome entrance song. She's also a huge animal activist. And I remember watching, I don't know if it was like a WWE special that she did and she was talking about rescue dogs and I just, I love that woman to death. Trish Stratus is another one. Stone Cold, DX, I'll give you a couple. Undertaker, die hard favorite. Who else? Who else is like, seems like somebody I would want to grab a drink with? Why am I blanking on his name? 619, oh my God. Rey Mysterio, Rey Mysterio. I'd grab, I'd grab a beer with Rey Mysterio. He's probably a favorite of mine for sure. Favorite animated TV show? I got so many and I feel like in the last couple of years, Netflix has put out a couple of bang and TV shows as well. Rick and Morty is probably at the top of my list. I haven't watched this season, so don't judge me based on that. Followed by, I love Disenchantment on, on, um, I love Disenchantment on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Followed by Family Guy and South Park, but I think those are givens. I don't know that anybody, you know, I think South Park is on a lot of people's favorite animated show list. What do you do that makes you solely happy and brings you at peace? Not this f-ing podcast. It used to be, it was, <laughs> it was real fun in the first couple of weeks and then I had these issues and now I wanna kill myself. In all honesty, it'd probably have to be dance. Dance is the one true thing that centers me, that aligns me. I don't know if that's dance or moving in my body in general, but I feel like working out, like stepping foot in a gym is my worst nightmare. It is my, it gives me so much anxiety I can't even begin to describe. First of all, I I don't like being in crowded spaces and gyms are crowded spaces. And so (laughs) I'd much rather get a full workout dancing in my home than hitting a gym. But I really do think the art of moving your body in sync with music does something for my brain and my body. And I don't know where I would be without it. So that's that. How do I learn awesome dance moves like you? Start taking class and literally start taking any class. You can even take, look, plenty of the people that I learn from and have learned under all make free YouTube videos, all offer free tutorials, not all, most, in some capacity or another, Start learning from them and seeing if you can follow along. If not, if that's too much for you or you're having memory issues, literally just start moving your body with no expectation that it's gonna be filmed or no expectation that you're gonna do well, actually have the expectation that it's gonna go horribly. And I do that every time. When I started dancing legitimately, and I tell everybody this and people fight me on it all the time. When I started hip hop dancing, I had two left feet. I had no rhythm to save my life. I was a musical theater kid, so my sense of rhythm and flow with dance and my relationship with dance was a lot different than it was with something like hip hop, which is very much 
less about what, what classical dance people would call technique and more so about being in your body. In addition to class, it was spending hours in my bedroom by myself, working on either stuff I learned in class that I wasn't great at, or working on moves like I really wanted to get good at popping. So I remember there every night I would go home and I'd work on my popping for at least like an hour. When I tell people that I think they can dance, they can definitely look like me, they can definitely have a rhythm and people say I can't dance to save my life, you can, but I mean, you have to start learning. I truly think that anybody can dance. Anybody can have rhythm. It's just, it, it, it depends on how hard you wanna work it at trying to get it if you don't have it. But not starting at all, you're definitely not gonna get any better. So you might as well try and fail, you know? Most wanted qualities in a gentleman. If I were to say most wanted qualities, this is gonna sound like really, weird but the ability to tap in a gentleman's ability to tap into their feminine without feeling like their manhood or their masculinity is threatened is the sexiest thing in the world to me and i know how many guys are gonna flip out at that statement alone so we're gonna close it on that i'm gonna leave that's the most wanted quality there and we're gonna move on have you ever given someone a wedgie i wish i don't have the balls i've never been a bully and i don't it's just, I, I never want to hurt somebody's feelings or make fun of them or make them the butt of the joke because people have done that to me my entire life. So no, but I wish I would have had the balls to do it to like a guy who bullied me. If I run into one later in life, don't worry, he'll get it. Or, oh, I didn't read the full question. It said, have you ever given someone a wedgie or are you not that bully in real life? I'm not that bully in real life. In fact, quite the opposite. And I think I said this on the Ned's pod, but I've always, <laughs> and I've heard some people say what I'm about to say. And I go, mm, but were you, or were you the problem? And since I was like six or seven years old, I've always felt like I've been a target to somebody. And for the longest time, I wondered why. I mean, in reality and in all honesty, it's possible that I l lacked so much I had no self-esteem that it worked and I was an easy target for people to bully. And so it's possible that that's why I was a target, but nonetheless, I was a target. I even got it. <laughs> I really thought that going to law school was gonna change like mean girl mentality against me because for the most part, I leave people alone. You will never hear me bashing on somebody's looks or success or other endeavors like i try to just focus on my lane and keep it that way and other people don't operate like that but i think because of my past and because i was bullied so hard by boys and girls in middle school and high school that i made a promise to myself that i was never going to make anybody feel the way that anybody made me feel and i'm not going to cry we're not going to cry but I've always led my life with that. I think if you were to ask me my number one moral in the sense of, <laughs> in the few that I have, I would say that leading with kindness to everybody, and when I mean everybody, I mean literally everybody, is my core value. It sounds stupid and cheesy, but it's just like, it's, it's something that like I will stand by until I die. I don't remember what we were talking about. <laughs> Fuck, we'll move on. Hablas Espanol. Oh, I gotta do my Duolingo today. I forgot to do it. I'm on day, I'm on day 167 of Duolingo. Consecutive day in a row. And I'm feeling pretty good about it. I never spoke Spanish before 167 days ago. Not a lick of Spanish. And I did, <laughs> I booked this job last year for this Mexican rapper with three other dancers. Everybody spoke very fluent Spanish and I was the only one that couldn't speak a lick of it. And I felt like an asshole and I looked like an uptight bitch cause everybody was talking with this rapper and like amongst themselves and the production crew. And I was in the corner hiding because I was uncomfortable because 
I communicate. That's my thing. So the fact that I couldn't communicate in a room full of people communicating in a different language, I was like, I will not be doing this anymore. And the next day I literally started Duolingo and I have not stopped in that time period. And we're getting pretty good. I got this question a lot and I, <laughs> will you start an OnlyFans? And a lot of people have asked this. Um, I will start a petition for my feet if people would be willing to join and I don't know how to start an OnlyFans. I don't even know where to start, but more importantly, I don't know how I could have an OnlyFans and keep practicing in my profession, if that makes sense. And so while I would love to tell the people that, yeah, uh, it, there's one up and coming, I got to worry about what pays my bills <laughs> and you know, if we lived in a world where women weren't shamed for that shit, uh, I'd be all about it. I was born into this world naked. I, my ADHD hates fabrics, hates clothing. It's just always been in my nature to just wear the least amount of clothing possible, which sets people off, but what the f ever. And I don't know that's gonna happen in the near future, so. We'll see though, if enough people demand it, maybe that's something I gotta consider. Would you ever try out for WWE? Absolutely. I don't know which camera's on right now. I actually trained wrestling when I was, this was post Neds. I stopped because there were a, a couple of girls who, and I get it, this is standard industry shit doesn't mean it's excused, but I had a couple of girls who, again, targeted me. And the thing about when you're training with other people is, right, there's a, there's a certain line that shouldn't be crossed. There's a line between game of play and actual like abuse and hurting somebody for the sake of just hurting them. And what typically happens a lot with wrestlers of all, not just women, men too, um, where you're no longer on the same level of um, aggression. And so while somebody might be playing out a, a move, um, somebody's taking it too far, but making it look like it's supposed to be part of the 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 game or the match and so uh, a couple girls did that to me and I was like I'm an actor I need my face to look good I need I need I can't be beaten and bruised and bloodied and broken boned for the sake of a couple chicks who just didn't like me and so I quit and I didn't go back and I really oh, the older me would have is like me now knows I mean it's why I went. I've, I've come back into acting and entertainment and dance again because I'm giving myself the shot that I should have given myself back then. And approaching each scenario with a new level of confidence that like, look, if it was this day and age and those girls tried me, it'd be, I'd either be having a talk with them, hitting them back or like flat out just like tattletailing on them because at this point it, you know, that shit's not okay. Back then, I just wasn't strong enough to handle it. Before law school, I, I succumbed to bullies' antics. I gave in, like I gave up. And so I'm gonna try not to cry again. This is where my therapist goes, Tells me, tell me what's coming up for you. Just like, what's coming up for you? I'm like, everything. What was your first rock concert? I know this, it was at Irvine. Irvine Meadows, I think it was called back then. It was Green Day, Blink-182, and Jimmy Eat World. And that actually might be my favorite concert of all time. I mean, it was pretty epic. Green Day's freaking amazing, and so is Jimmy Eat World, and so is Blink-182. I, th I still have the sweatshirt from that show. It smells really bad. Um, it smells like mothballs, <laughs> like uh, not, it smells like it's old cotton. I don't know what old cotton smells. You know what I mean? Like mildewy, but not like I can't wash. It's old. Like it's not even a soft sweatshirt anymore. It, whatever. I'm not getting rid of it. <clears throat> you mentioned you're Lebanese. Can you speak Arabic? 
no I cannot. And that's because my dad, who is dyslexic and ADHD, good Lord, couldn't teach anybody how to skip a rock, let alone a full-blown language. But I also think maybe he didn't teach me Arabic, so I didn't understand the shit and the boys, like the shit him and the boys talked about. But I think Spanish is a better place to start than Arabic. Arabic we will one day. I'll get there, I promise. Least favorite sandwich. We talked about this one. And what, what did we decide? Cause I don't remember, I don't mind bologna, like Oscar Mayer bologna. Like you know what you're eating with bologna. It's not that bad. Ginger snaps, sauerkraut, spam. I don't know that anybody eats spam in a sandwich. Who has a spam? Hawaiians. So I'm a racist. Is it a fried Spam sandwich? I can do a fried Spam sandwich. Messi or Ronaldo? You know, I'm not a real big soccer avid watcher, but I don't, I don't know, Messi, I guess? I don't know, I'm not, I, somebody's gonna presume that I know shit about dick. Maybe I will get through all these in a day. How long have we been filming for? Minus like five minutes, 40 minutes? Fuck, I talk a lot. <laughs> Are you laughing because you agree? You're so... <laughs> Are you laughing? <laughs> what? What are the heck? Are you like, are you just now realizing that you talk a lot? You're such a dick. <laughs> you. Should I just stop? I feel like this is this is this is an episode. We're answering your frequently asked questions. I may have stubborn fing A, I can't talk today. Oh, favorite sneaker. Let me go get it. Let me go get it. I gotta show it. Sh Sh Shannon Sharp showed his dunks. I gotta show mine. Hold on. Cause I know nobody's got this shit. These are my favorite shoes right here. I, I don't know what kind of dunks these are. All I know is they don't make them anymore. These I've had since like 2007. They are a custom pair of Nike IDs. Cause back in the day, I don't know if anybody knows this, Back in the day, you used to customize any type of Nike with literally any color palette that you wanted. Now, I'm pretty sure now you have to have, you're only allowed to pick between specific colors. But back in the day, you could make your dream shoe. And this was my dream shoe. And you can tell because I had Rock Doll but on the side of the shoes, it says rock and this one says doll. These are my like epic Rugrats 90s shoe. And I've been trying to find a place where I can get them remade because I've danced in them so much that they are creasing. Every sneaker head is probably losing their mind right now. I don't give a fuck. But I love these shoes. So if anybody knows how I can get these remade, please let me know. I'm gonna move right through. Are you currently still acting? Yes. However, this industry is not what it once was in terms of the steps that you had to follow to get an agent or book jobs or go out on auditions. And I have been, it's been so much easier to get back into dancing than it has been with acting and acting jobs and auditions. So that is one of the things on my list for 2024 is to get an agent and start going out on auditions again. But I was focusing more on doing it for the love of the game rather than finding representation right away. Cause once you start going on auditions, it kills your dreams really fast because you have to deal with a lot of rejection. But acting is my first love. It will always be my first love. Favorite DBZ character. I'm flattered that you think I watch Dragon Ball Z, but I don't. So I don't even know, I couldn't even lie to you and make up a character. Favorite sports team, Eagles or the Dodgers? I think if I had to pick between the two, probably the Dodgers. 
favorite cast member to hang out with. I like to hang out. I mean, I've only hung out recently with Daniel, Devin, and Lindsay. Daniel a couple more times than the others. But I like to hang out with all of them. Top five characters of all time. Ooh, that's a great question. Top five characters of all time. Walter White, I think, is going to be at the top of my list. And then the rest, I don't know what order. Heath Ledger's Joker, for sure. Who's another great, complex, fun character? Dexter? Dexter's probably up there. Who's a good female character? Ah, oh, Jessica Jones. She played Jessica Jones is great. Who's another great one? Because I named four, right? Robin Williams as Batty in Fern Gully. Definitely take or any character played by Robin Williams is a top five character for me. Thank you for reminding me for that one because I, I almost forgot that one. We lost him too soon. Favorite superhero film and show? Jessica Jones, I think would be the show because I just mentioned her as a character. Uh, I'd pick another one. Boys is, the boys are is awesome. Would it be the boys is awesome? The boys as a show is awesome. Superhero film. Endgame was pretty awesome. I'd say out of all of the Marvel movies. Somebody gave me a confession. They said, I've never seen The Godfather, Scarface, Jurassic Park, or The Wizard of Oz. I don't know how you make it through life without seeing any one of those movies. First of all, The Godfather. Probably one of my top films of all time. Bro. I bought this couch two months ago. Two months ago. Look at the sides of these couches. They're shredded. What's your favorite concert you've been to? This is way too hard of a question for me to find an answer to. <laughs> I've been to, there was a time where I was going to five concerts a week. Like I was going to a concert almost every night of the week for like a period of two years. There was like three to five concerts a week that I would go to because I just loved live music and I live in a live music hub, an entertainment hub, if you will. The only concert that I really cried at was an Elton John concert, so maybe I choose that one. Like the 1975, seeing them live was unreal. Any Lamb of God show, any Slipknot show, Burna Boy, who else? I gave you five, five's good enough. Tell, I dipped my PB and J in ranch. Jail, F***ing jail. Try it please first, F***ing jail. That's all. Show your feet, no. Somebody asked who I had sex with on set. Nobody. I wasn't really out and about with other child actors like that. I was, <laughs> nah, I was getting into debacles with older men who preyed on me. That was a whole other issue that we can talk about on another podcast. I was always told by older people, especially in the entertainment industry, that I was mature for my age, which was a dead on bringer to f***ing rope me in because I was mature for my age, but that doesn't mean that it makes it acceptable for people over the age of 45 to prey on anybody that's 18 or younger. But we shall save that for a whole other episode. No one was attracted to me back when I was in my Ned days. Like there, I just was never the cool kid in the group. I was never the popular girl. I was never the sought after girl. I was never asked to any dances in high school or junior high. Boys just weren't, boys were kind of mean to me and kind of diggish to me, which is kind of funny that we've ended up in this spot. But I'll tell you who I wish it was though. If I were to, if I were, if there were somebody that I were to hook up with on set, it'd probably be Kyle Swan. I, I low-key had a little crush on Kyle, only because he was nice to me. <laughs> he was probably out of everybody he just was, he was nice on his own terms and he never really kind of followed what was cool and whatnot. And he always, like that made a real difference in my life. Um, somebody that regardless of what was happening, 
reached out a nice helping hand to me. And so I thought that was kind of hot. So if there was somebody, it would have been him. But I was a little bit of a late bloomer with sex. And so um, that never really happened around the time I was acting. I didn't want to be f around. I wanted to be like on set and auditioning and working on meeting those goals. So like sex wasn't really a priority for me back then. But yeah, I think, did I, I just fucking answer the questions. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like this. I know you said don't sign off. Hit that subscribe button in case you forgot. And I'll see you guys next time.